Hello YouTube, welcome again to Case Technologies. We're going to do a video today on the top IT certifications in the industry right now. And the first one right here, as you can see, is the CISSP certification. This is the ISC Squared organization's uh, top certification. This is their most popular one. Um, they also have others. Uh, Certification like SSCP, and we can look at a few others they have. They have the SSCP, C CSP, the Cloud Security, and the CAP. They're also well known for that as well. But this certification right here is basically a high level security certification, cybersecurity certification. Um, is really geared towards more of a management uh, tier of folks, and we'll come to some other certifications in this video as well that talk about some that are more on the technical side if you're interested in penetration testing or anything like that but the CISSP is a certification that I have and it'll definitely take it to your next level as you can see the positions or the the types of um, people who earn this uh, certification or who benefit from her are chief information security officer someone higher management security manager an art auditor an architect um, someone who's a consultant that might be independent a necro architect um, director or manager so a lot of high-level positions really benefit from the CISSP however this does not mean that you shouldn't get it if you're um, just an information security officer or if you're just a security analyst it'll benefit you greatly as well um, and that pretty much sums it up for the the basic overview on the CISSP let's go on to our next certification which is a Cisco one and that is the CCIE. The CCIE is a certified, a Cisco certified Internet network uh, engineer. And this is the highest Cisco certification there is. Um, and that engineer, I misspoke, expert. This is the highest uh, certification that Cisco provides. These are highly sought after individuals. It takes people years and years to even accomplish this level of networking. It's, it's nothing to scoff at or um, to be ignored. Um, I've seen people who've been able to start their own businesses off of this, uh, work from home, uh, gain all types of part time and um, independent consulting work, um, a flexible life experience and work experience, life balance. Uh, this is one of the industry's top top premier certifications and they have different tracks they have the enterprise infrastructure enterprise wireless as you can see there they have data center focus on data center things um, security section they also uh, have a security uh, specialization they also have the service provider specialization, specialization and then collaboration and just an FYI to keep some things in mind, next year Cisco is thinking about changing certification. So this is really what I feel is a, a top certification as of right now. Who knows how things may change once they change the certification track and how they're giving out certifications. All right, the next one is the Certified Ethical Hacker, the CEH. This is another a certification that had been very very popular and is provided and given by EC Council you can come to the site it's eccouncil.org and they have different certifications as well a lot of these um, different organizations provide different levels of certification they also have the CND certified network defender but right now the one on the list is a certified ethical hacker this is a big one it's pretty pricey um, it's kind of and in, in my opinion I don't get as many calls asking about it as I used to it used to be highly regarded very popular but with his prices and it's, it's um, uh, requirements to just even have it or, or, or take it are, are kind of expensive you have to go through this uh, initial review board to even get it um, as you can see here it has a, a number of questions 125 the test duration is four hours However, that still is not as long as the CISSP, which can take up to six hours. It's multiple choice, like most are. 
And that's pretty much CEH. It's, it, it talks about practical hacking uh, processes, procedures, how to uh, gain access to different systems and, and how to prevent people from um, to uh, compromise any of your systems and your organization as well. Pretty good cert. Still a, a quality cert. And then you have CompTIA's Advanced Security Professional Certification. This is uh, CompTIA's highest security certification exam that they offer. Um, it's it's for your your hackers penetration testers. This is a highly uh, practical certification exam. It's not like the CISSP where it just talks about theory. Um, you're not going to go through a lot of exploits and things like that in the CISSP. However, in in the CASP exam, you will have to cover those. It's also 8570 compliant, just like the CISSP. It's level three on the, uh, um, 8570 compliance on the DOD's uh, board or list. So it's, it's a very popular exam. Um, it's highly respected as well. And I, I know people who have it, it, they rave about it. It's really helped their career. Yeah, it's a maximum of 90 questions. It's multiple choice, 165 minutes. So really, all, not quite three hours, uh, but basically two hours, 45 minutes. So it's not as long as the CEH and, and definitely not as long as the CISSP. And it's much cheaper than both of those. I think the CEH is 600. I know when I took the CISSP years ago, it was $600. And this exam is uh, $439. CompTIA is pretty fair on a lot of their um, exam prices. And that's a good one if you want to be in um, security. The next one is the CCMP routing and switching. As you see this big banner here over the years, this is a, has been a big one. But this path is going to change come October, I mean February 24th, 2020. CISO will re release their new certification exams. And this one may stay relevant and stay on this level, but who knows, it may change. Cisco is going into more of a, a API-based development. You have to have some developmental skills. They want people to be able to configure large amounts of routers and switches in an enterprise environment by knowing some Python or knowing some Ansible or knowing um, some REST API, API calls with various programming languages. So this was a big one and it still is as of right now, but in a couple of years that could change as well. And then we have the Microsoft MCSE. Um, this has been a good certification for years in, in the IT industry. The IT industry is just not made up of just developers and software engineers, but these certifications do give people a core set of skills, a way to learn, a structured way to learn, and a way to advance within the industry. And the MCSE is not sure of that. In level, there's a step one skills, they have step two, the exam. Then you have certification to continue education. This is um, their recommended path and what Microsoft expects. Now here's the, the details of it. Before you get the MCSE, you will be a, a MCSA, which is Microsoft Certified System Administrator. And then they have their paths and cores on the base level. Then you have to pass one of these exams, either the uh, Securing Windows Server, uh, implementing a software-defined data center, designing and implementing a server infrastructure or advanced server infrastructure, and then you have their configuring and operating a hybrid cloud with Microsoft Azure Stack, and that's Microsoft's new um, cloud platform that they they rival rival AWS with. They're in competition with them over that. And then you have after you complete all of the steps you become the MCSE core infrastructure. And this is a pretty good, uh, not pretty good, it's a good certification to have if you're gonna be working with Windows products. If you're familiar with Microsoft already and you wanna go that route, this would be a great route to go. 
Uh, and next is a CCNA, which is also affected by Cisco's change uh, come this February 24th, 2020. This could change as well, but I doubt it because it's the uh, certified Cisco Networker Associate. It's pretty much Cisco's flagship cert. It's their introductory cert to even start using their products. You must have, must, and I put the emphasis on must, you must have a basic understanding of routing and switching. Or you won't even be able to implement any of their routing protocols, even the most sim simple or simplistic routing protocols, you will not be able to do it. I've held a certification in a series. Over the years, they had all these different tracks, right? Uh, CCNA Cloud, Collaboration, Data Center, Industrial Service Provider, Security, Routing, Switching, and Wireless. And now, I'm going to click on the new track. It's going to be change. It's going to be the CCNA here. And it's going, to re it's going to replace all these other ones. It's just going to be the CCNA. And at the CCMP level, you're supposed to be able to uh, have a concentration. Let me get the detailed information on this because this is a big cert. I want to emphasize and bring up the importance of, of knowing this one. This one is very good. It's been very good to me and a lot of other people that I do know. So... Here we go. Yeah, if you are already working on it, you can plead it before by the 24th and you'll be fine for the next three years. And you'll be good to go there. So you here to talk about mastering the essentials, including security automation and programmability for rewarding work in the broad range. Yes, that the CCNA, anybody in the industry will tell you it's a respectable cert. You don't have to worry about it. You get it. You're fine. But they're adding in that automation piece and programmability. So keep that in mind if you want to chain the CCNA, do it soon, or you'll be in for some new changes. And I've seen Cisco make major changes on their exams, which makes it pretty difficult to pass on the next go around and here's the CompTIA Security Plus this is another one from CompTIA like the Advanced Security Professional but it's a little lower one this is one that I tell my students to, to come to our who come to our courses let's start with this one so we can get your career started and get you into the industry and it, it covers all types of um, security uh, items uh, and it gives you information or technical information on networking protocols um, uh, what else uh, hardware uh, physical security it just gives you a light a light or not so deep s surface level on a lot of different security domains and that's the best way to, to, to sum it up you know you cover uh, several security domains on the CompTIA Security Plus and it gives you a nice footing or start to get into the IT industry. We talk about threats, attacks and vulnerabilities, identity and access management, so like access control list, it covers technologies and tools that you, sh you may want to use like um, antivirus software, then risk management, how to go into an enterprise, and recommend to your your management okay should we accept risks should we not accept these risks um, architecture and design should we have more firewalls less firewalls where should they be a pl place and then you talk about cryptography and PKIs like cert certificate authorities um, how are we going to verify and validate that this is our certificate authority where should we be getting our keys from and here are the jobs that use uh, CompTIA Security Plus the system administrator, network administrator, security administrator, junior IT and auditor, auditor, penetration tester. You have a security specialist, security consultant, security engineer. And this exam is $339. It's a 90 minute exam, a pass score of 750 out of 100 to 900. But overall, this is a great exam as well. Then for 
uh, my Linux enthusiasts, if you want to make a serious impact in the IT field, you want to get your Red Hat certification um, as far as it relates to Linux. If you want to make a big impact as it relates to Linux, you want to get your Red Hat certification. You start out as an RCSA, which is a uh, Red Hat Certified System Administrator. Then you have the Red Hat Certified Engineer, which is the higher level certification. And, that, and, and both of them are great for learning the ins and outs of the uh, Linux platform or Linux OS. All right. And here is their page for it. The version seven and eight. And let's see if we can find so our existing ones. They have several different tracks for any candidate working towards it with the seven and a new track that places more emphasis on Red Hat Enterprise Linux eight. And then that pretty much sums up for Linux and for Red Hat. Like I said, if you want to make a big impact, that's the way to go. A lot of employers are looking for people who are Red Hat certified and who really know the Linux operating systems. They're using them for all types of uh, web pages are being hosted on uh, Linux operating systems. Um, what else? Uh, any app or anything like that. Most backends are on Linux. Most things run on Linux these days. Or because it's open source and it's free. And then our next, our, our last but not least of the core of the top IT certifications is the AWS Certified Solutions Architects Associate. Now this right here, if you want the most bang for your buck, you want to be AWS certified. As a former employee of one of the FANG companies, and if you're not familiar with that, that's Facebook, Amazon, uh, Netflix, and Google. I work for one of those companies, and when I work for one of them, I know what it's like to work for you know work really hard and, and see cutting innovation um, day by day. I'm telling you now, the AWS certification is the biggest bang for your buck. The exam doesn't cost that much, um, but you're really gonna have to read up a lot. They have a lot of different uh, different uh, software that they have, like. Uh, identity access management s3 ec2 rds they have all types of uh, softwares and technologies that you would have to learn to even get the certification so it's quite a bit that you have to master but this by far is one of the best on this list especially when it comes from bang for your buck however you would still need to have some type of uh, basic understanding of either a Windows server platform or Linux platform because you have to run your software or your company software on some type of OS. All right, let's go on to our honorable mentions or our bonus items. And the first one is the PMP. So it, you can still get into IT without having to have a very technical background or technical career position. You can still have a career in, in the IT, but you might have to go the management route and right now, I'm gonna say the best certification for you to go to management route right now is a uh, project management professional. Uh, and it's provided by the Project Management Institute. And you have to get certified in this to teach you how to run a project, how to manage it. And you go over to PMBOK principles. I've never taken this exam, so I'm not sure how difficult it is, how long you should prepare and study or anything like that. But the exam has 200 multiple choice questions and you have four hours to complete it. To maintain your PMP, you must earn 60 professional development units every three years. So that's not too bad. So that's about 20 a year. Prerequisites, they might want you to have a secondary degree, 7,500 hours of leading and directing projects, 35 hours of project management education, or a CAPM certification. Um, and then the alternative is a four-year degree with 4,500 hours leading and directing projects and 35 hours of project management education or a CAPM um, certification again. Again, this uh, the price for members is 405 non-members is $550. And again, this is a great honorable mention, and I wanted to provide something for people who felt that 
they aren't very technical or they might not want to go on the crazy side of technical and IT, but they still want to be a part of, of the IT industry and be a part of something that has longevity and that's moving forward. And the last, last but not least, uh, in the honorable mentions, is a CompTIA Network Plus certification. Now, this will give you basic understanding of networking, subnetting, routers and switches, um, uh, ports and protocols, uh, some network security, and then some troubleshooting, and day-to-day -day network operations. Uh, job seekers. Uh, and those who are currently employed can benefit from this if you are in one of these roles. You can be a junior network administrator, help desk technician, systems engineer, network specialist, analyst, network field engineer, or junior systems engineer would also benefit from this. I've had and um, maintained the Network Plus in the past. It's a great certification. I've had A Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus, and I'm telling you, they give you a great foundation. They give you an organized way to learn. They're awesome. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Remember, comment, subscribe, and let me know some other videos that you may want to hear from me in the future. Uh, thanks again.